What's up YouTube and flashlight people? I'm Joe, you're watching my channel Ink and Iron. Back today with a uh, impression of the Wuben X1 Pro. This has just gone live on Kickstarter a couple days ago. Super early birds are already sold out because the max output on this guy is 13,000 lumens. We have spot mode, flood mode, mixed mode. It's got a bicycle mount. It's got replaceable 21700 batteries all for a price point of on under 150 USD here in, uh, this is November now of 2025. So let's talk about this light, everything it's got going on. It does have a lot going on. Optional cooling fans, different mounting systems, USB-C charging. So yeah, let's uh, get into it. So first off the packaging that I received, let me pull back. The packaging I receive as an influencer is pretty boring. It was just some hardware, some foam. So I'm not sure what the final packaging looks like for Kickstarter supporters, but optional bits and bobs include a bicycle mount. Um, this is a tripod mount, 13,000 lumens in this mixed flood and spot mode. Um, it does have dedicated spotlight and floodlight modes. I think it'd be a really good like bicycle light as well as uh, adventuring type light. By the way, if you are interested in purchasing this, go ahead and use the links in my description and at no additional cost to you, you'll help the channel with your purchase. The early bird price on this is gonna be $119. Uh, you can save a little bit more if you buy two, three, or five units. And $119 is gonna be 20% off of the MSRP. The Wubin X1 Pro here is meant to be an upgrade to the Wubin X1 flashlight. The Wubin X1 had a maximum output of 12,000 lumens. This one does one better at 13,000 lumens with a 377 meter beam distance. This model also has replaceable 21700 batteries. They are 4,800 milliamp hours. The charging is supposedly twice as efficient as the original X1. And this also includes reverse charging capacity, which essentially makes it a power bank as well. The Wubin X1 Pro is rocking Cree XHP 50.3 high LEDs. They are lighter, smaller, with higher color rendering than the original. As I said before, you also have a bicycle mount, which is supposed to be more stable and wear resistant than the original. You also have the option to put on a uh, quarter 20 threading insert for use with a tripod. For prolonged high output, there is a fan, a cooling fan that initiates. In addition, the fan is uh, detachable, obviously, and also washable, and uh, will help extend the uh, lifespan of your flashlight. So yeah, sounds great, but who's the target audience for this light? It's gonna be uh, outdoor adventurers, workers in the field, people who like camping, uh, hiking, you know, outdoorsy folks of all nature. Uh, you've also got uh, police and fire and uh, emergency responders will probably enjoy a light with uh, this much capability. I almost forgot to mention there is a tactical strobe feature as well, which I won't be demonstrating, but it is quite dazzling. If you're a real high-end EDC or like tactical enthusiast, this is probably also worth checking out. And then because of the bicycle light, definitely cyclists. This is a hell of a headlight to put onto a bike at night. Technically, because you can mount this on a tripod, if you're like an auto mechanic or something, you could get away with using this light. Certainly the output is good. Uh, maybe a little less convenient to have to set it up on a tripod, but it is an option. And then people who just like to be prepared for an emergency, if you've got a bug out bag or um, you know a vehicle emergency kit, something like that, this would be a, a pretty appropriate light to throw in. So I'd like to demonstrate that this does work as a power bank. I've, yeah, I do. Uh, this is my old cell phone. So we're going to go ahead and use a lightning cable here. This little green light means nothing's happening right now. Come on. Should get a blue light. There we go. And now the phone's charging. So I'm not going to sit here and charge the whole thing. I think you get the idea. So we are actually drawing power from the 21700 battery bank inside the light and charging the phone, which is an awesome extra emergency use case for this flashlight. I'd like to give you a little bit of a size comparison as well, because uh, this light is pretty substantial. Okay, so one thing I struggle with is putting this little USB-C cover on. 
does have to be kind of perfectly positioned in order to get back in. I'm sure I'd get my feel for it the more I use the light, but yeah, just so you know, a little bit fiddly on that. Okay, so here's the Wubin X1 Pro. Here's the Wubin X3, which I reviewed recently. Uh, it's got a swiveling head on it, but you can see it's completely different size category, as well as the Wubin G5 here. Yeah, it's an absolute beast of a light. Okay, let's get an objective uh, ruler in here. So we're looking at about 137 millimeters, just under five and a half inches. It's five and seven sixteenths. In terms of thickness, we are about one inch, maybe 1.125, one and one eighth inches. In metric, it's gonna be, yeah, 27 millimeters roughly. Overall width, looking at uh, 54 millimeters. Two and three sixteenths. And then let's get a weight on this because it is a chonker. Okay, weight in ounces, 13 and a half ounces. The equivalent weight in grams is 384.3 grams. So quite a large light. If you're going to mount it to something like a bicycle or a tripod, that's not gonna be much of a concern. If you're gonna throw it in your pocket, um, <laughs> it's going to be a little more unwieldy. You do have a lanyard attachment here, so you could uh, hang it from something, suspend it from something. That would work fine. If you are going to carry this off your person, you should know that the IP rating is IP65. That makes it dust tight and protected against like high pressure water jets. So something like a rainstorm or uh, dropping it in water shouldn't be a problem for this light at all. It does have an impact resist resistance of one meter drops as well, so that's good. You will probably damage the aluminum in my experience, but I think overall the light will survive. So before we get into it, let's uh, take a look at the performance of this light at night. We can check out the uh, spotlight, the flood beam, and of course the combo where you can get the highest possible lumen output on this guy. Spotlight mode starts off in eco mode, that's 10 lumens, can run for 455 hours. Spotlight low is 200 lumens, can run for 28 hours. Spotlight medium, 500 lumens, 11 hours runtime. Spotlight high is 1200 lumens for 4 hours. Spotlight turbo can put out 3500 lumens for 1 minute, 2000 lumens for an additional minute, and then 1200 lumens for 3.7 hours. Floodlight also starts out in a 10 lumen eco mode that can run for 365 hours. Floodlight low is 200 lumens for 28 hours. Floodlight medium is 500 lumens for 11 hours runtime. Floodlight high is 1800 lumens for 3.1 hours. Floodlight turbo can put out 9500 lumens for one minute, ramps down to 3000 lumens for another minute, and then stays steady at 1800 lumens for 2.8 hours. The highest output spotlight plus floodlight mode Starts on eco for 20 lumens that can run for 220 hours. The combined mode low is 400 lumens output for 14 hours. Combined mode medium output is 1000 lumens for five and a half hours. Combined mode high output is 3000 lumens for 1.8 hours. Combined mode turbo mode is 13,000 lumens for one minute. We'll ramp down to 5000 lumens output for another minute. We'll ramp down finally to 3000 lumens sustained output for 1.7 hours. So as you can see, this light really kicks butt outdoors. Very, very highly illuminating and uh, does kick on the fan after prolonged use. So something to be aware of. Make sure you're looking at this little caution hot area because these LEDs are extremely high output and do put out a significant amount of heat with prolonged use. So just be aware. So switching between modes on this light is about as simple as it gets. You can hold down the button to turn it on in any mode and you'll go straight into eco. Hold it down, should get low, medium, 
high, and then double tap for turbo. Tap it once in turbo mode to turn it off. We hold it back on for eco mode. Eco mode is going to be uh, 10 lumens, unless you're in the combined mode like I am right now, and that's 20 lumens. So if I switch modes, those are both 10 lumens. But yeah, that's it. There's no um, there's no color modes. There's no signaling modes. This is purely high output, high performance lighting, period. So keep that in mind. If you're looking for something with additional functionality, this is probably not the light for you. But if you're looking for pure performance, that is a flashlight that kicks butt, uh, this is probably up your alley. So overall, the Wuben X1 Pro is kind of an all-in-one package in terms of a functional flashlight. Uh, all the functions that I hear people talking about high intensity lights for, you know, having replaceable batteries, being able to take this out of doors without issue, waterproofness, cooling fans, super high output, uh, different mounting options, you know, lanyard attachment. It's, it's really a grab and go solution for a lot of different use cases. And uh, I think that's a pretty high value for what you're getting, especially like $120 here in the Kickstarter early bird era. And then uh, what 20% on top of that would put it around $150 overall price MSRP. So I, I think for what you're getting for the money, that is a really good value. And uh, yeah, I hope you'll consider it for your uh, EDC or for your tactical use case or for your outdoor use case or whatever. Um, definitely something to, th to think about, and if you're interested in purchasing this light, please use the links in my description and give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind. All right, I've been Joe. You've been watching Ink and Iron. I hope this has been interesting for you and helps you shop around for lights that you may want or need, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. All right, bye.